Hey everyone, I'm Ryan Douglas, the teaching pastor here at the 456, and I have really enjoyed this series on the Holy Spirit with you guys over the last four weeks. I hope that it has been a blessing to you and an encouragement to you, and uh, I, I don't want to be done. Like, I, I hope that we're not done talking about the Holy Spirit. We're definitely not done talking about God the Father, right? And we're definitely not done talking about Jesus. So let's just make a commitment that even though this series that has focused on the Holy Spirit is done, that we're not done thinking about Him or uh, contemplating him and learning about him. Like let's, um, maybe I'm not speaking to everyone here, but like those of you who grew up like I did with very little teaching on the Holy Spirit, let's just agree at least among us that, that we're not going to be done with this just yet. Okay. So we finished up this past week. We talked about spiritual gifts primarily. We spent almost all of our time, uh, there in first Corinthians 12. But if you're looking for where the Bible does talk about spiritual gifts, I referenced it pretty quickly on Sunday, but first Corinthians 12, Romans 12, Ephesians four, and first Peter four are places that the Bible mentions spiritual gifts. Now we don't, for, we, we don't believe at all. Well, let me back up. I'm getting ahead of myself. Here's what we had on tap this past week. The Holy Spirit gives gifts to every believer and gives them a place in the body. And what I was going to say is we don't believe at all that compiling those four texts, 1 Corinthians 12, Romans 12, Ephesians 4, and 1 Peter 4, we don't believe that that is necessarily uh, the sum total of spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit gives. Um, I, I don't know that applying clown makeup is a spiritual gift. I, I remember being in middle school and our church youth group had different ministries you could be a part of. And I, I signed up to be a clown and we would go to like nursing homes and children's homes and hospitals. And we would, we, you know, we'd do our makeup and stuff and we'd practice. And anyway, um, I, <laughs> I remember people being like, maybe this is your gift. You know, like they would say that to us as kids. I, I, I don't know that applying clown makeup and learning how to juggle or make balloon animals, which I can do both. Um, I, I don't know that either of those are spiritual gifts necessarily, but they're really cool things. Uh, and so like more power to you. I can only make like seven balloon animals. So, and I can only juggle basically. I've always wanted to learn to juggle like really, really well, but, uh, but the spirit gives us gifts and then places us in the body as he sees fit. And we saw that in first Corinthians 12, that the, that the Holy spirit is the one who has given us these gifts and he's, he's placed us in the body. You'll remember the one reference that I, I went to really outside of first Corinthians that we looked at at all was in Ephesians, that these gifts are given for the building up of the body, the equipping of the saints. And those were primarily the teaching gifts. But I want you to have this mindset that, that in Corinthians and in, um, in Romans, especially, well, it's the same in Ephesians as well, but in, in all three of these places that Paul, because he's the author of those three texts, Paul is talking about unity in the body and he's talking about the importance of being unified. And he's reminding that the, the Christians that they are in this together, that they are one body by one spirit, right? And so what you, you're part of our church. I mean, and, and look, if you show up every three weeks, if you show up every six weeks, if you're coming, you're part of our family. But, but that begs the question that like, the spirit has gifted you. The spirit has equipped you and has equipped you with a certain set of gifts or a gift that's predominant in your life um, as he sees fit and has placed you in our body of believers. And if you move on from our church or if you're watching this and you don't go to our church, you're in another town, he's placed you in that group that you're part of for a purpose. And so we're trying to figure out what that purpose is. So that was our application this past week. We should seek to find and enjoy our place in the body of believers. Um, I, I would not be happy if I was not preaching. I, I I'm sure that at some point I will be tired and retire a little bit, but I, I will never quit teaching the Bible. I will never, as long as I have my mind and my voice, I will never quit teaching. Um, it's, it is, it is my gift. I believe that God has called me to be a teacher. Um, maybe even more than a preacher, like preaching and teaching are these two different gifts, I think, but, but God has given me these gifts. The spirit's given me these gifts. And so you have a gift too, and you don't have to be the preacher necessarily, but you've been placed here by God. And so I want you to really think about that. I want you to remember that. And our prayer this past week was, God, give us wisdom and boldness to serve you in our church. Uh, like, I, I think it's important that you know that we need you. Like, Pierce and Micah and I, as pastors, as elders, like, we need you. We need you to be part of what we're doing. And God has gifted us in certain ways, yes, but like, like... <laughs> I, my prayer for you is that God would give you wisdom and that God would, would help you to have boldness to, 
to be connected to the body, to serve. Like I remember that I was four years old when I knew I wanted to preach, but then like for the next 16 years, it didn't cross my mind to be pretty honest with you. I think, I think maybe it crossed my mind until I was about five. And then I was, I don't know what I was going to do. I was going to be a fireman or something. Right. And so uh, at 20, though, I re- remember that I had wanted to preach and I was really seeking God about what do I do. And, and at that point, I didn't feel in the least bit equipped to preach. And if I look back over my last 25 years of preaching, I would certainly say um, I, I would certainly say that I've grown in my gifting and that, that it's it's easier for me to do. It was really hard for me to do at first, but I trusted that God had given me that gift. And so um, wh- whatever gift or gifts you feel like the Holy Spirit's working in your life, like we need them. We really do. And, and just trust God to work those out in you. And I pray for wisdom for you and I pray for boldness for you. I have three questions I want you to consider. One, have you ever felt like you didn't belong somewhere? Have you ever been in a setting where you just did not feel like you belonged? Uh, That for me is pretty much any group setting. I I do not like group settings. I get really nervous around people. I'm incredibly uncomfortable around people. If if I'm going to be in a group setting, I like it to be on my terms. I like it to be in in a space that I'm comfortable with. Um, I, I don't ever really feel like I belong in a group. I have about a handful of friends that I'm completely myself around. Um, and then everywhere else, I'm just kind of weird and awkward. Um, and, and so I, I, some people are like, man, you're kind of rude or you're kind of standoffish. It's, it's just because I, I truly don't know how to handle myself around strangers, right? So I don't ever feel like I belong <laughs> anywhere, really. Uh, the second question, though, is where are you most yourself and when do you most feel you belong? I think for me, um, when I'm preaching, I feel most myself. Uh, when somebody asks me a Bible question and I get to have a Bible discussion, I feel most myself. Uh, if I'm at my studio and somebody comes in and wants to talk art, I, that's my, that's my turf, you know. So I feel very much myself. W- w- where are some places that you feel like you belong, like you're most yourself, like you you just that, that's kind of your your sweet spot. And then third question is this: um, What do you think your place may be in the body of believers? In, in terms of gifting, in terms of spiritual gifting, in terms of the Holy Spirit sealing you in Christ and bringing you to this place where you are with us now, what's your place in the body of believers? And, and maybe it's service and maybe it's hospitality and maybe it's giving and maybe it's encouragement and maybe it's mercy and maybe it's teaching and maybe it's tongues and maybe it's healings and who knows, right? Like we don't know. Um, but, but man, we'd love, we'd love to see that. And so what do you think your place is uh, in the body? What, what has the Spirit gifted you to do? And so kind of let that roll around in your mind for a little bit. Discuss it amongst yourselves. Man, I cannot wait to see you next week. And we will be starting a new series directly. Love you guys, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.